So I want to talk about controversial science. So all scientists do is that they, they look at the world and they come up with new ideas. But of course, when you come up with a new idea, a new idea is often going to challenge an old idea. So science has always created controversy. It always has, and in fact, it always will. For example, there was a guy called Galileo Galilei. Uh, he lived uh, quite some time ago, in fact. But when he was around, people would look up at the sky as they do today. They would see the sun going overhead and the moon going overhead and the stars going overhead. And so they thought, well, everything is kind of going past us. So we, in fact, when you think about it, we must be the absolute center of the universe. So there must be the earth in the middle and then, well, sure, there's the moon and then there's uh, Mercury and then there's Venus. And then after that, well, then there's the sun and that's a fair bit away from us. And then there's, you know, planets like Mars and uh, Jupiter and Saturn, and, and they're all some way away. So, but everyone thought they had this geocentric view of the universe, that Earth was the center of the universe. And then Galileo came along and he said, no, uh, we're not. Uh, Earth actually goes around the sun. So I'm going to change. It's not a geocentric view of the world. It's a heliocentric view of the world. And so the sun is, in fact, the center of the solar system, and all the planets go around the sun. And, and this was obviously fairly controversial at the time because it challenged people's long-held beliefs. Um, and that's just one example of, I suppose, a controversial science idea, but an old one. And we, of course, now we, we just accept that it's a heliocentric solar system and that we're just one small part of the entire universe. Uh, but it took some controversy at the time. Another old one, but I still think it's quite interesting, is cigarettes. Um, when cigarettes first came out, you know, it was quite a common thing for people to uh, do was smoke cigarettes. And even back in the 1940s, 1950s, doctors would say to uh, their patients, you should take up smoking cigarettes. I actually knew a person whose doctor told them that. Um, and that person, unfortunately, they actually died of lung cancer because it took some time. But we did, in fact, figure out in the end that... Um, if you do, if you, you know, the cigarette consumption increases, then so does the rate of lung cancer because cigarettes or the, and the, the chemicals in cigarettes uh, will kill you. So, but this was controversial at the time and controversial for several different reasons. Um, some cigarette companies didn't really want their product uh, to be uh, a lethal. So there was you know, a great deal of controversy around the health effects of cigarettes, but it's a certainly an interesting uh, historical um, controversial science thing to look at when you think about it. No controversy today, but not really that long ago. Evolution's actually an old idea. So this guy called Charles Darwin came up with it um, quite some time ago. But you know, so it's evolution by natural selection. It's this rock solid now scientific concept. Although many people actually still do doubt that evolution you know, occurs. And this is often basically due to their deeply entrenched beliefs about the origins of life. Um, there's actually, uh, just, just to go quickly through the kind of the mountain of evidence, I suppose. Uh, one is really, really quickly, there are these moths, uh, pepper moths. So this is a moth that um, lives you know, in the forest, I suppose, on trees. And it used to um, land on trees which had this kind of lichen on them. And they used to look like this because this would camouflage them against the lichen. And then what happened was the Industrial Revolution came along and all the trees got polluted and the lichen died and the kind of trees were covered in soot and they went black. And so the moths weren't camouflaged anymore if they looked like this. So they evolved, in fact, to look like this. These ones all died out because uh, they were eaten by birds and then these ones survived. So they, they, it was microevolution, it was quickly, but that was evolution. Another quick example of evolution, because it's quite interesting, is if you look at kind of a human uh, arm or forearm, a dog foreleg, you know, forearm, a bird's wing, or a whale's front flipper, you'll see that the bones of them all are basically the same. They're all the same bones. And this shows that all of those animals actually evolved from a common ancestor. Um, you can even say, well, no, nah, whales, I don't think they did. Um, they live in the ocean. You can actually look at a whale and see that has it, it actually has... It's what's called a vestigial um, structure, but it's got an old leg bone in its body, which shows that it actually evolved from an animal that had um, back legs, so hind limbs. But this is like just gold evidence. Um, you can also look at uh, the DNA data about uh, evolution. And so we've, in the past you know, decades, I suppose, sequenced heaps and heaps of um genetic evidence about various species. And we just know, I mean, this is kind of slam dunk evidence about uh, 
the the fact that evolution kind of happens. The fossil record is really great, far from complete. You don't really need that or bones anymore because DNA tells the whole story. And some people say, "Well, no, nah, it's just a theory. Evolution is just a theory." Um, so there's this here's this guy called Richard Dawkins, and he said, "Well, if you think things are just a theory, well, gravity is just a theory too. I mean, you can't can't see gra gravity or grab it. Um, so if you think evolution is just a theory, well, gravity is just a theory too. Uh, if you doubt that theory, jump out of a ten-story window." Um, so evolution does still cause a lot of science, scientific controversy uh, all around the world. Again, it's because of uh, people's deeply, um, deeply, deeply entrenched beliefs. Another um, controversial science idea is the use of genetically modified organisms or GMOs. So some people will say, well, it's just not natural to take the gene from one species and put it in another. You know, it's just not natural. Um, I mean, the purpose is, of course, to increase the resistance of crops or the resistance to resistance to pests or the resistance to disease of, of crops so that basically, basically you can get more food to increase food production to feed the billions of people on the planet. Um, and the whole, oh, it's just the fears and it's just not natural. Some people have the fear that those genes are going to somehow escape into the environment and, and take over other animals. And of course, a scientist will go, well, yeah, that's not going to happen because it's actually really, really hard. You got to do a whole bunch of stuff to put um, the DNA from one species into another species. It's not just going to kind of float in the air and happen. It's really, really hard. So scientists have a think about GMOs or genetically modified organisms. And what are you worried about? Again, don't kind of I don't, I don't get that. But again, it's really controversial because. Some people think that it's not the way it should be. Um, so controversy ensues. Global warming, current controversy, so fairly new, fairly you know, new scientific idea. And again, some, some non-scientists will say, well, global warming, it's, they don't believe it's man-made um, if they believe it's happening. So some of the well, it's, it's, it's not man-made, it's just because of the sun's a bit warmer or it's just we're just going through a cycle. Um, and some people say, well, it's not even happening. They're, Earth isn't getting warmer. Um, and scientists say, well, the rising global temperatures over the past few decades is just undoubtedly caused by human activities. And as thousands and thousands of scientific studies um, prove and provide this mountain of data to um, support that claim. But even though there is this kind of mountain of data um, and you can see that as the atmospheric carbon dioxide levels have risen and risen and risen and risen and risen, kind of over the same period of time, the temperature has risen and risen and risen and risen. Um, so there is still this controversy that remains about. It. And again, it's some people don't want global warming to be happening, so they'll hold on to their hold on to their beliefs, or they'll believe things which um, are contrary to that. So, so it's certainly a controversial um, area of science at the moment. Vaccinations, another area of controversy in science. I find this one um, very unusual. Um, so I've got a I've got a nice little picture here. I've got a picture of a um, the the orange is bacteria, and the yellow is you know is a white blood cell. Um, so the white blood cell is kind of consuming or it's it's eating the bacteria to get rid of it from your body, and it does that. And this is happening in your body all the time. Um, it does that because it knows that the orange the bacteria is non self. Um, so the bacteria is. You know, it is bad and it recognizes it is non-self and so it does try to get rid of it. So really, really quickly is that what happens is when you first are exposed to some sort of disease, um, your body actually gets sick for a bit uh, and then your body kicks in and fights the disease and you get all these you know, disease fighting things going on in your body um, and then your body actually remembers when you've been sick via a particular um bacteria or virus so the next time you, your body sees that virus um, you don't get sick at all your body again you just kind of kicks in because it's, it's got these memory cells which go I remember you you're not me and I'm gonna get you straight away and so your body doesn't get sick and this can actually this this memory uh, this can last for years so you're considered kind of immunized against it and so what scientists do well this is great this whole thing but uh, you got to get sick to get it. And like, well, we don't want people to get sick. So wait a second. What we can do is we can put things into their body or expose them to things which won't make them sick. Um, you know, we can give them an injection or something. Sometimes, you know, you just take um, take something orally. We can put something into their body, and their body will go, "Well, that that's not me. That's not self. Um, I'm going to fight it." Um, 
and then it will remember it. And we can give it things which um, are part of diseases. So we don't give them the disease, we give them things that look like they're from the disease. So that when you do, when you are exposed to the actual disease, you go, yeah, yeah I've seen this before. You haven't, you've seen like a bit of it, but you recognize it as non-self. And so therefore you're vaccinated and you don't get sick. Um, and vaccination is it's just this unbelievably amazing technology. Unfortunately, um, there is this controversy around it. And, and lots of it recently stems from a guy called uh, Andrew Wakefield. He published a study uh, quite a long time ago um, in a medical journal, but he reported that eight children who got a um, MMR, measles, mumps, rubella vaccine, uh, began to experience some symptoms of autism. Um, the thing about that study was it was later retracted and it's also now widely regarded as fraudulent. And in fact, that person was later stripped of his medical license. But some people took that on board and they kind of ran with it. So there's this, you know, the whole, well, you know, facts and evidence are just seen as a matter of opinion rather than a proven truth um, seems to be the case. You know, this is what lots of people actually think. And but blind, unreasoning belief is considered val, you know, a valid thing. So you know, people kind of ignore, have this capacity, their brains have this capacity to just ignore uh, the scientific data. So the simple fact about vaccines really is that they've saved literally millions and millions of lives around the world. They've even eradicated the existence of really horrible diseases like smallpox. Um, it's just this phenomenally good technology. But we have this, some people have this perception that they're controversial, they're not a good thing. And there's no scientific evidence to support this. Um, there was a kind of fraudulent case, but that's, you know, if you're gonna pursue it, you would know that. So why, what we're really talking about when we're talking about controversial science is, we're really in fact talking about, you know, the way the human brain perceives, thing, perceives things. So we've got this amazing brain, you know, the smartest uh, organism on the planet for sure. So why do we struggle when we're trying to you know, think of things rationally? So, so science is just a collection of evidence. So why do we perceive it? Why do different people perceive the same kind of evidence differently? Um, and this is basically because humans are inherently biased um, thinkers, you know, and we're also irrational. We, we struggle to be truly rational in the way that we think about the world because we're constantly experiencing something called cognitive bias. Um, and this is kind of things like, you know, it's, it's, it's there as an evolutionary support mechanism, in fact, because um, it's good. You feel good about being right. It kind of feels better to be right. So it makes you feel better about yourself. When you think about the energy involved, it's actually easier to be right. Well, I think this is right. It's hard to change your mind. Um, going through a process of if you have a, a strongly held belief and you want to change that belief, it often involves something called cognitive dissonance. So that is kind of the stress of having two contradictory beliefs at the same time. And, and you, you actually, well, you don't do it consciously. Your brain unconsciously works to avoid those kind of things. Um, but again, if you um, you kind of exercise, again, these totally you know, inherent unconscious things that your brain does, if you exercise cognitive bias, it actually enables you to also reach decisions quicker. Um, one is, there's several different types of cognitive, so there's kind of the way you think biases. Uh, one of them is, is confirmation bias, and this is basically the tendency of people to favor information that confirms their beliefs. So again, if, if I do think that vaccines um, are bad, and I see something, a study that says they're bad, I'm like, well, that proves it, proves I'm right. See, I'm right. It's terrific being right. Um, and if, if another thing I say, well, that's, you know, the vaccines are actually really good. You go, nah, no, I don't know. That's, you know, you just ignore it. Your brain doesn't give it as much time. So this is, this is confirmation bias. And this effect is actually stronger for emotionally charged issues. Things like evolution and, um, you know, genetically modified organisms, global warming and vaccination, um, and, and also deeply entrenched beliefs. So, you know, the origin of life, that's something that's just part of people. They just believe it with their core. So changing your mind about those kind of things is, is really hard. And we're not really super duper well adapted to do those kind of things because the fact is that humans are, are simply not that great at rational thinking. Um, and that's the way it is. So I suppose when we do think about controversial science, um, it's also good to understand that we all have these cognitive weaknesses and having an understanding of those cognitive weaknesses can actually help you to keep an open mind as you explore controversial science 
or in fact, any new ideas that you do explore in your entire life. But that's a bit about some controversial science.